a young city literally had the world's most devastating nuclear explosion of all time. They literally thought all of Europe could shut down because of it. Every single person watching this, your lives have been affected by Chernobyl, and a lot of people don't even realize. They don't know. We've been talking about this place ever since the dawn of time. This is what we wanted to get to. This is going to be the Holy Grail, but also one of the most dangerous cities on Earth. Oh Yo. my god. Radiated puppy. This is so cute. Day three is off to a good start. <laughs> This has to be Mama Dog because she's like watching after him. Dude, Mama Dog's coming on to me. Oh Aww. my god. Are you radiated? Just a little bit. Oh my god, you can feel his heartbeat. That is so cute. What's up guys, it's Sam and Colby. Today we are here with Nate. Tapped at this place called Chernobyl 2. They made a second version of Chernobyl for the military. Military families and more specifically the Duga station which we're at right now. Duga. Not only does it have like very little exposure on YouTube after the fact, but back in the day, you couldn't even find it on a map. <coughs> Ew. Ew. Sorry. There are signs on our way in that show that no regular, like, civilian could come in here. You had to have special clearance to even come into this town, let alone the station. This is where the Soviets had their radar station that would detect any missiles or any, like, threat from other countries, specifically the United States. Since it was, like, a secret radar location and nobody really knew about it, it would actually disrupt other radio signals and make this sort of tapping sound, which was later named the Russian woodpecker. Around the world, people would hear that like ticking sound in radio stations. Disrupt. It's part of where the Soviet Union got the stereotype of being like spies. spies. <laughs> Oh my god. Radioactive puppy. A lot of conspiracy theories say that inside these walls they were doing experiments like mind control, behavior control, sometimes even like weather control. A lot of people think that actually Chernobyl as a power station was created to fuel and energize this location. Although it did give power to Pripyat and the surrounding areas, a lot of people think the main power source was used here for the military. All that is like 100% conspiracy theory. I thought one of the most interesting ones was that Chernobyl was intentionally melted down in order to cover up what was actually going on at Duga. You're saying that people actually think the explosion of Chernobyl was just a cover up because this place was so secretive? Mm -hmm. And That's they thought nuts. some really weird... It's not necessarily clear what happened inside here because most of the documents were either archived in Moscow, Russia, or completely destroyed. Whether or not it actually happened, no one will ever actually find out. Until now, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> this is the only long sleeve t-shirt I brought here, so I look like a fucking highlighter. <laughs> look at his colorful freaking shirt. I feel like I can only skip in this outfit. Come on, guys, let's go. Speaking of outfits, look at this shit, dude. Enjoy Chernobyl, die later. <laughs> die later. <laughs> die later, oh, oh my god. god. What Misha just said was this is the marching square. The military side we're over here next to the barracks where a lot of people stayed and slept and this entire area is lined with soviet propaganda so propaganda is basically what the soviet union was using to indoctrinate isn't the right word but create like a military and socialist culture to normalize a military. make it cool to go to the army basically like peer pressuring you into wanting to fight for and be a part of the Soviet Union movement. That is what was disrupting other radio stations around the world. They probably thought it was Morse code back yeah, then. Yeah, I bet they thought there was a code going on. Dude, it's crazy to think that's actually what they used to see around the curve of the planet. Like to see if rockets were going off pretty much. Oh yeah, because wasn't it supposed to detect missiles as well? It detected yeah, any threat, any missile, any bomb, specifically US. Again, like one of the conspiracies was a lot of people thought that if you had a certain frequency, you could control the mind. Mm -hmm. So the more concerts you go to, the more the government controls who you are. <laughs> Oh, 
On the map of the Soviet Union, this territory was marked at the place of unfinished kids' summer camp. That's mm. how Soviet authorities were hiding their top secret military objects. So they literally were trying to hide this from everybody. Wow. That's why I told you that it was a top secret military object. And that's why you saw that sign. Don't go there. Dude, it's so similar to Area 51 in the States. And Google Maps doesn't even show it on the map. And <laughs> aliens are here and real. Yeah, they're definitely real. <laughs> Wow, that is super cool. Oh my god. Let's get an aerial perspective of this bitch. Damn, I wish we could climb this. Oh man. That would be a scary climb though, dude. Yeah. You're like 500 feet tall on this one, and the other one is probably about like 350 feet tall on the end. There's two of these, like giant, out in the middle of nowhere. What is that? Yo. Nate, we need you to get in this hole. We need you to get in the hole, dude. I don't think that. Get in the hole, Nate. Get in the fucking hole, dude. This appeared here maybe like a few months ago. I think, I think that beast. local authorities in the future, they will put a fence over here to prevent people from getting close to the antenna. So that's only five feet. I think you should jump down there. Get in the fucking hole, Nate. No, 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 no. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get in the hole. My god, look how giant this is. They, one, tried to hide it on the maps. Two, they destroyed all the documents that had this. And three, we didn't even tell you about this. When people ask about the Duga radar station, the Soviet Union denied that it ever existed. They started coming out about it now, obviously, but during the time of Chernobyl, they were like, no, it doesn't exist. I wonder Why? if the KGB was by. KGB or the secret Soviet police. But yeah, I mean, if this is a secret military camp, I bet they at least knew about it and helped facilitate it a little bit. So Misha was telling us just a few minutes ago that they've got this whole place cammed out now because a couple years ago, like three stalkers were here and uh, one of them fell off and died. It just goes to show you, you gotta be really careful with these banded structures. Sad as if you look into that, so the guy, he fell, but not from like a lethal distance. He just like broke a lot of his bones, but because they were stalkers, which are people that are legal in here, the friends actually left because they were afraid of getting caught and going to jail. Probably could have been survived if they would have immediately called the police damn. and got him to the hospital, but he died because the friends left him. Jesus, damn. Would you guys leave me if I fell? No. No. Like, absolutely not. <laughs> you just don't leave your homies behind either. Yeah. Course, like, yeah. that's fucking lame. Yeah, don't <laughs> be fucking <laughs> lame, dude. All right, guys, here's the control headquarters, basically. Dude, Whoa. yeah, look at all the equipment. Someone's just like, torn out of here and thrown on the ground. I guess someone just raged at the office one day. So behind these doors was some weird secret military stuff going on. So like we said earlier, this place was known as Chernobyl 2.0. It was another town. This right here actually was a fire department. And all these posts right here are a gate that basically blocked and separated the military from the residents. Because over here, there's schools, apartments, building. This is like a normal town and then just past this fence right there. Boom. All the military secret stuff. So they allowed residents to live this close to like a secret base? So it was only the military family. So no just random Joe could come live here? No. So they secret. had kindergartens and stuff too though? Like playgrounds? Yeah. So kids were able to run around this? That's... Oh yeah, but they wouldn't be able to see anything because look at how tall that is. So imagine being like a little kid and just knowing there's a mysterious fence. You just always have that curiosity of like what's on the well, yeah. bro, also imagine being like a person leading your life behind an antenna the size of the sky. No one ever being able to tell you what it is. This is one of the apartment buildings right here. It looks pretty kept up, to be honest. Yeah, look, all these windows are not broken, unlike the other Chernobyl. Yeah. Whoa, look, dude. They're the kids' playground. Bro. Kids' playground. Little huddies. Dude, this is Little Huddy. You Lil... might be in there doing a TikTok dance right now. What's up, bro? Dude, that's actually kind of dope. That is. You want to go inside? Exploring Little Huddy's hole. <laughs> this is the only place we're allowed inside. Spider webs everywhere. Snakes probably underneath me. Dude, Dude. what would they do in here? Just come and fucking sit? I just feel like we're gonna... <laughs> I feel like the EL Fudge elves are gonna come out and like start beating our shins. Out of our chocolate factory! Yeah! <laughs> what about the Snow White dwarves? I would chill with Dopey. Do you know they call him Dopey because he's tired? Dopey because he... Oh, do you... Dopey. No, I'm pretty sure Dopey drank cough syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would love to be a little kid and have like a little secret hut. You know what I'm saying? Dude, we could like probably just make you a secret hut. 
Dude, really? did you not make huts when you I were made kids? forts out of pillows, not out of sticks. Dude, my dad and I built a freaking awesome wood hut. Really? No one ended up going to. So these were the little kids that were playing in the huts. Wow. What does this kid have in his hand up here? It's a selfie stick. You can see the uh, ring light in front of him. <laughs> oh, he's doing TikToks. This is an airplane. And look at all these. These are called mask bugs because it looks like little tiki masks. Oh, those are so cool. Oh, shit. A gas mask hanging right there. Like Whoa. a little ass kid's gas mask. But look at that. You can see the nets in the gymnasium. If like balls got up there or something. Gymnastics bars. That's cool. Oh, this is sick. Main entrance to the school right here. Yeah. Just imagine a bunch of high school kids walking down down here. It's really surreal. I bet it did not look like this at all. Overground like this. Oh no, not at all. What the fuck was that? Did you hear that? Dude, it was like- Yo, like a giant door slam inside. Not even kidding, guys. Could have been just like the wind maybe, slamming something. Like you said yesterday, Nate, I feel like we could be watched at any moment here. When you think about it, there's cameras, there's stalkers. There it was again. But if you were gonna stay at a place in Chernobyl, this Chernobyl 2 is way better and way more well kept than the other Chernobyl. There could be somebody in there. We're leaving Chernobyl 2.0, this military town. I found this place to be like super like, eerie comparatively. Why was it so important to hide this place? Now we're gonna go off and interview some of the grandmas in the outer villages. The babushka. Self, the babushka. The babushka. Self settlers. They came back into Chernobyl like basically illegally and said, no, screw off government. We're gonna stay here. This is my house. Some say that these people are some of the most happy people since they did come back and they lived out their lives here. I'm excited to see some grandmas. Moss. Goodbye, radio puppies. Oh my god, that is the most adorable thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Let's go and see the babushka. After an hour drive on roads that had potholes, literally in the middle of the forest, we have made it to the babushka's, babushka's. house. And we brought them some babushka food. I'm so excited to go hug a grandma. Is that a weird thing to say? Yeah, yeah it's a little weird, but like I mean, it's also sweet. Здрасте. Hello. Baba Hanya. Oh my god. She's so tiny. Hey. <laughs> This is Babushka Hanna. 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 Yeah, I plan to take you first to her cousin and then to come to her. Uh -huh. She's asking where you're from. Ah. Oh, yeah, America. California? Come on, she doesn't know where California is. Oh, come on, she doesn't know where California is. She's in Kiev maybe a few times. Oh, really? That's the furthest distance she traveled. Come on, come on. Stop. Okay, now we're all back. Heavy? Is it heavy? Come on. Yeah, I mean, it's a little heavier. It's not too bad. Wow. Oh, that's the awesome. first time doing a well. I just can't believe that they don't know anything about like the Western American world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're just in this land by themselves. It's a completely different world. Imagine all the technologies she hasn't seen. I doubt she has like a TV. You, you know what I would love? I would love to bring a VR headset and show her VR. She would probably. Oh would probably my be god! Overwhelming for her. She's basically stuck in time back in the 1970s. She can leave, but that road is long and treacherous. Like she probably just stays here. Well, do you think she even has a car? No. no. There's no way. When you're that age, travel is not as easy as it is when you're like, all right. Dude, no. she's like 18, 18 years old. Like he said this morning, man, keeps her. Yeah, seriously. But that's what keeps them alive. The land, all the work. The work. That's what keeps them alive. Yeah. That's their native environment. So we're here meeting the first babushka. Her name is Babushka Marusa. Here she is. Babushka Marusa. Hello! Uh. Yeah, I just said that we're a little late, but... She just finished with homemade french fries for us. Hey! Oh. Dude, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah, tiny yeah, little yeah. ladies, full of joy. You're you too attractive. She says you look like a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. I'll just go and help her with food and I'll yeah. be back. Immediately yeah. roasted by the grandma. Like, this kid looks like a girl. <laughs> Thanks, grandma. Damn. 
The village of the grandmas. This is like probably one of my favorite parts here. Dude, I think for me, it's being with someone who is totally outside of a Western paradigm. That for me is so powerful, man. She just doesn't see the world from the same angles as we do. She's not a capitalist. She's not like a Westerner. She's not a YouTuber, bro. Like she is content to live here yeah. off the land on her own. And I'm glad that they're not like actually alone. Like there's like, I think you said 12 people living here. If they wanted to go talk to people, they can. Literally right off the bat, she's feeding us some homemade French fries <laughs> and I guess some moonshine. Is that moonshine? Oh no. Oh dude. Oh, uh oh. Take a whiff. Oh, that is gonna be strong. Whoa. That's gonna be intense. We are gonna be fucked up. So we're getting up. fucked up with the grandma. Dude, our new Chernobyl grandma getting us fucked up and giving us some American French fries. That is a hella grandma. Sour cream. Oh yeah. Dude, look at that, man. That's gonna be good. He's like all of these grandma's grandson. Dude, it's yeah. like having 12 grandmas. Yeah, man. I think some days he gets lunch like four times. Yeah. Probably. He probably tells them all that so we can have this potatoes yeah. four times a day. So we're getting fucked up with some grandmas. Moonshine is way higher alcohol content than normal stuff that you would get in the stores, but it's more pure. So it's not like white claw? This is gonna be like 12 white claws in one shot. Usually we say bujmo. That means cheers. Oh. I just told her drink like a little bit with you. You don't want it? Why? I'm driving the car. Oh. He can't drink moonshine and drive. <laughs> we all subconsciously went. Yeah. Come. All right, cheers. That burns. Oh, that burns? Yeah, Dude, in the I, best I, way. I feel like a lantern, bro. Dude, so that moonshine that we just drank was made from potatoes and other fruits that Babushka Mamrusa grew on her property. Oh, no way. I think everything on this, besides, yeah. I guess, the sour cream. Dude, this is a blessing, man. Uh-oh. <laughs> Misha wants to go for round two already. Jesus. I just told him I was already feeling it. Jesus. On the way back from this car ride, we're gonna be like, Whoa! Again? Right now? Why are you guys, what? He poured him up. Come on. Oh, look second one. Usually the second uh, shot in Ukraine we drink for French. The long ships and short ships and ships that sail the sea. The best ships are French ships, so here's to you and me. Oh, hey. that's nice. See, someone appreciates it. Yeah, it's cool. Sounds good. Compote. Compote. Oh, you're out. I'm out. Yeah, they're water and after. You're getting red. Misha's gonna make fun of me because I suck at drinking. In Ukraine, we have like such tradition. When you enter the house for the first time, you're obliged to drink at least three shots. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna black out. How are we gonna film the rest Dude, of this video? Three shots will <laughs> definitely black me out. I'm gonna pass out all my other grandmas. <laughs> Misha's funny. like, you guys are wimps. What's funny about this is babushkas are about to drink us under the table. No, they're not. They're no. taking fourth a shot. They're watching us get blacked out right now. <laughs> That's what they want. Love and ladies. To love and ladies, dudes. This go. is not a good Usually idea. Usually in Ukraine, we stand up and drink for ladies. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> this is a bad thing. <laughs> this, this is. This I is gotta bad. take it too. <laughs> <Take> it <over. laughs> Alright, let's go. You didn't do all of it! I told you I'd take it in two. Dude, you're not gonna take all of it and you just made me do it? I didn't make you do anything. That was your own choice. That's a bitch move. Like and subscribe if you think I'm a bitch. Watch you guys get like 100k more subscribers. 300k <laughs> likes if you think Sam's a bitch for not taking the rest You know of what, y'all, if, <laughs> if you think Sam's a bitch, just hit the subscribe button right now. Speaking of subscribe, we've noticed a lot of people that watch our videos are not subscribed, and to that, we wanna say what the heck, it takes five seconds and it's free. Do it, guys. All right, if you can hit the <laughs> <laughs> if you can hit the subscribe button before I finish my shot, then I will give you a dollar. Nice.
Nice. Have you done it yet? He goes, I'm so sorry if it wasn't good enough, like tasty. And we're like, no, it's absolutely amazing. One of the best meals we've had since we've gotten so here. So good. And the fact that it was all grown from like the garden and the things around us is awesome. We ate at Beauty in Essex earlier this year. Super top notch, but this food has sold dogs. Like, yeah. That's part of what makes it good. Yo, Simple. these pancakes and whatever, the raspberry jam, that is like One a... the best mm, desserts I've ever had. So good, so oh good. Oh my god, I had like seven. We need the carbs <laughs> and the bread. And Hopefully. Also, when's the next time I'm going to have babushka cakes? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You can have some babushka cakes tonight, no? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Dude, you're... <laughs> I'm just waiting for Sam here. <laughs> Yeah, young, beautiful kids, she says. Aww. How about you? Again. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I told you! I told you in the morning! Watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him. So, my name is Hanya, and I'm like 88 years old. How was life before the accident? She said that in the past, like, they had those, like, collective farms. Mm. That was their life, pretty much. It was as every job, sometimes boring, <laughs> yeah. but okay, it was a job, and you needed to do that. Half of the summer they spent at the garden. Oh, oh really? That's a garden. Oh, like, like, every day, day, like, she goes to the garden, she picks, oh. like, cucumbers, tomatoes, like, all the things that we yeah. ate on the table. Wow. You can imagine how much, like, work you work. to do, especially for her, at the for age of person. 80. For us, you buckets of water, okay, it's like two minutes. For her, it's like maybe one hour. So it's almost like they're doing it out of habit now. It's not a complete necessity, but they're that that's yeah, how yeah, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. what they do. That's it's just their do. job. It's, it's just their job. Almost like yeah, yeah. They do it because they do it. That's the culture here. Mm. It's cool. During major holidays that they had back in the days, they were gathering all together, drinking, eating, <laughs> and singing songs. Really? Oh that's so yeah, sweet. That the way that Sounds they, like yeah. I was gonna say that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Hey! When was the last time she left this land? She doesn't remember. Really? Wow. Long time ago. Could you ask her how often she sees the other people of the village? Вы часто зустрічаєтеся з другими мешканцями села? Very often they are just sitting outside uh, under the trees and they are just uh, talking a few times a week. When you meet with your friends in the village, what do you talk about? Уже тепер нічого не балакає. Другий раз так я. Не, ну про що ж ви балакаєте, як зустрічаєте? So they remember early days when they were younger. Really? Oh, How nice it was. They reminisce. Yeah. They reminisce. Mm. All the memories, yeah, that they have. I can imagine. Yeah. Let's imagine yourself. I've been trying this whole trip, dude. Look. You're 80 years old. And then they like, think, what did I do wrong? Maybe I needed to do that. Maybe I needed to go there. Maybe I needed to travel there. But no, I was at work, like I was doing that, that, like, like and I, I can't imagine that. So does she regret, like, returning? Баба Марусь, ви жалієте, що вернулись сюди? Ні. Ні. Тільки мені сім кінці. Але в general she doesn't regret. Тоже цікаво тут залишитися посередньо. Sometimes she's lying on the bed and thinking who will be the last inhabitant of this village. Who will be the last inhabitant? Who will remain the last one in the village? There are 12 of them. Yeah. And sometimes she's like lying on the bed and thinking oh, who will be like the remaining the last one? Wow. They all realize that sooner or later they will all pass away. Mm -hmm. like, that's life. What's um, her favorite thing about her life now? Що вам більше всього подобається у вашому житті? А я за дітками та за внуками. She's just missing her oh, kids they, very much and there is nothing much she can like and enjoy yeah, because she doesn't yeah. have livestock, she does not have the thing that she could do like earlier. Oh. And she has like mostly cats. Yeah. yeah, but when kids come to visit her, that the time when she enjoys life. That's it. That's it right there when yeah. the kids come. When the kids come. I wanna ask about when the news first came that they were gonna have to be evacuated. How old was she? 
And what were her emotions like hearing that news? Mamarus, kolej vam perši raz kazali pro evakuat toj moment. Oh, djetki, ne, 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 to što... It's too emotional for me. U babi bolo dvije karovi. Elica i karova. I dvoje svinje. I vse se je veli, izdavali. And all these cattles, they were taken away first. The government told them that you need to give away all your cattles. Oh. That's how they were making money and living. Pretty much, yes. Oh my God. Well, they were just planting potatoes and then the chairman of the village council came to the garden and said, get ready to give away your pigs. Tomorrow morning you give away your cows and then you will be evacuated. They had a like special register, so they were saving money all their life. Nice. And now it's all gone. Oh. When the Soviet Union collapsed, their yeah. savings just... Yeah. What? I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. The Soviet Union collapsed, the state disappeared. So the value of the currency what? is gone, and all the money that they were saving, they disappeared. So how long after that accident did she return? Bab Marus, jak skoro pisla evakuati vy povrnul? Da, da, u ovim mjestom i bojaš i što pošli mi skadjaje nam. He stayed outside during summer, winter, and only next year, in 1987, in the fall, they returned in October. Has it changed much? Jak zmenilos žetja pisla vari? Plohu zmenilos. Te bacite jak ono. She said it's really bad now. Jer bijo te ogore ne sarvalo se. If it never happened, like if this disaster never happened, it would still be very beautiful. So she said that there are only few people alive from their community who stayed wow. outside the zone, who decided not to return. So why did she decide to return? Baba Rusia, why did she decide to return to the house? She wanted to go to the house, but she wanted to go to the house. She wanted just, she wanted very much to come back to the land, to the home. Motherland. She says mother and motherland, these are the things that you can't like replace or change in your life. Ah, okay. She says the place where you were born, that's the most important place for your life, and you need always remember about that. And she says, and she says, don't even look, don't even try to look for another and better place in the planet. But she's feeling very lonely here. Oh man! Because kids are far away. Probably, if she had the same way of thinking as nowadays, back in the days, she would not return. Maybe. Whoa! Really? So because she worries about her kids. She wants to be close to you. Yeah. So she thinks she would be happier if she didn't. She never returned, and she stayed with her family. It's a very doubtful question, to be it's honest. Like that's what she said. She's like, the way she is thinking nowadays is totally different from the way that she was thinking back in the days. Well, let me let me ask this: Why stay? Uh, I know this is your home. The land's your home, but why not go to be with your family now? Barbarus, but you take a petania. Ну, понятно, це ваша земля, це ваша хата. So there is no enough space for her at the place where her kids live. Вони мене люблять, діти, жаліють. They love her, but look, they live in the park. And like, there is not enough space for everyone. So she said that maybe in the future she will, she will go. Okay. But not now. For the most part, though? Is she happy with what she had lived this life since the accident? Bam Marus, no, zahalnem, vy ste šťastliví, vy čustujete sebe šťastliví, to či? Ja šťastliva, že mene deti silno žalijú. She is very happy that that she has great kids, grandkids, and great grandkids. Yeah. Because in total, she has like seven great grandkids already. Oh my God! And they all. Take a good, good care of her. Trusta, i i radosti vam, i zdravlja vam krepko. Yeah, she wishes you like happiness, luck, and strong health. Spasiba. You are also like kids for her, like me as well. Like I'm. It's gonna make me cry, man. Zdravlja vam u tim. She wishes you. All to have very strong families, find your second halves, and live alone and happy. Guys, I gotta say, like, to be quite honest.
I don't know. I was looking forward to coming to Chernobyl for years. Coming here is definitely surreal. It's definitely very fulfilling to be like, I did it finally. It's kind of like a learning experience. But it's really sad. Seeing all the people that were affected and how much loneliness it created. It's unlike anything that's ever happened before. It's really impactful and you can see from our interviews with these grandmas that it affected a lot of people and changed their lives completely. It's just one of those things that you like learn about. You realize it really affected a big amount of people. Can't make that mistake again. It's all about living in the moment, man. That's it. Once something really bad like that happens, you realize what really matters in life. And that's all about health and happiness, just like she said. It's very simple. Health, happiness, being with family, and doing your duty. Yeah. I think a lot of people out here like really showed up. They saw the problem at hand, realized that the world was at stake, and stepped up to the line and like did what they needed to do. Yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, health and happiness, that's what it's about. Yeah, man. Shared experience. Exactly. Yeah. We, we wouldn't it. be doing this with anybody else, man. Just remember that. Of course. This is something we've been looking forward to for years, dude. A hundred percent, man. Six years now. We did it. We did it. Sick. We did it, man. Broke my heart that she's lonely. At least she has other people in the village, you know? Yeah. Oh no. It's really cool. Yeah, she made the, the decision to, to live here and if she really, really, really wanted to leave, she would leave. She would find everything in her power to leave. But obviously she's living a happy enough life that she stays. She has her grandson, Misha, come all the time and be visitors and she's just tell her life. Yeah. It's just really interesting. It's like, all these other workers are so like scientific about it and like, all right, let's do this. And you get to talk to a real person that just like saw it and had nothing to do with it and just kept on living. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It's like these people really did have their whole lives changed. Yeah. For something that wasn't their fault at all. Living in paradise to that. Yo! Yo! This should be a big lesson to a lot of people. Hopefully everybody watching this will like realize that anything in life can happen and that's why you have to cherish every moment of it. Say do one very chest. He loved, I just said thank you very much for everything. He loved, uh -huh. Because she wants to bring some more food, I said. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, детки, oh, детки, великие расти, да счастливее будь. Grow tall. Oh, we need that tallness. Come on. Sure. Fucking five man. Right now we are in the village of Fabrikivka, which is at the very edge of the exclusion zone. But that's the village I'm originally from. Where right here? So, yeah, right here. Perfectly well, like the garden right behind the house. There was a river a little bit further away. There was a football pitch, like community football pitch. We yeah, together, like at weekends, especially all young guys from nearby. It was a short way through the forest. How we could get to the school where my father used to work. Yeah, and you see now, wow, 
that's all that's left. All that's left, just one small little structure right there. So you just need to appreciate small things that you have in your life because one day it can disappear, literally. Yeah. You're not sad about it anymore, right? Uh, like I have memories, so when I come back here, uh, yeah, I'm getting sad. Life could be different. Yeah. Like, totally different. My parents always said that it was like a paradise place to live in. They had forest, they had river, mushrooms, berries, like everything. No internet back in the days, you know? So people were talking one to another, gathering much more often than nowadays. So that's what's sad, you see? Yeah. Of what it could have been. Yeah. When's the last time you were back here? Two or three years ago. Really? Yeah. I know you were really young, but you have some pretty vivid memories. Yeah. Of the house, of the garden that we had right behind, of the yard where I played, walking around, running to my grandmom's place, yeah. eating apples on the way, and all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Great memories. Yeah. You, when you're a child, yeah, you enjoy it, it's adventure for you. Mm. When parents allow you to, to go alone to the grandmom's place. Just it was safe, up. huh? Yeah, you see. Yeah, safe. absolutely. Move on. Move on. Live on, move on, and appreciate it while you got it. Dang. I mean, dude, things could be so much worse in our lives, you know? Just makes me really grateful for our privileged lives. All that heartbreak, all that trauma. He has to live with that trauma for the rest of his life. I think he weathers that very well. He's got a very like cool mentality about everything. I mean, obviously he said like when he's here, he's of course sad, but he's like, it's life. Like appreciate the stuff you got. Know that one day it's gonna be different. I think the biggest thing I've learned coming to Chernobyl, you know, sometimes when you want to seek meaning or some answer, you know, something that's gonna fix it all, some idea, I think that's a lot of what at least I find myself searching for when asking these people these things. You know, the babushkas. When we asked for their advice, or Misha, when we asked, you know, like, is it hard? The answer is, it is. Vladimir said, I came back because it was my job. You know, and, and Misha says, I live on because what else can you do? You know, and when we said, dude, I'm sorry your family had to go through this, it's like, that's life. And that's the thing that for me is like, so tough about this is there's no meaning, it just is. Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. Uh, it's, isn't it kind of frustrating? It's not fair. That's what yeah. it feels like. It's just not fair. <laughs> but, but, but it's like the entire concept of fair and unfair is too small for what it actually is. You don't realize what you have until it's gone. It's a huge lesson for me personally to like live in the moment and cherish every moment that you have. Mm. Friends, your family, the place you live, all of that can change in an instant. Misha gives tours to people day in, day out, day in, day out, showing them the ghost of his city. Dude, that's a strong thing to be able to do. If you want to practice living in the moment more, I think the best way you can do that is just pay more attention to the small details of life. <sighs> Take it slow. And it's like, don't do it to tell anyone about it. There's a joy just in listening to the way the wind, you know, shimmers through the trees. And I don't have to tell either of you guys about it. It's just me and the wind, you know. This is all we got.
right guys, with that, we did it. We officially did our whole experience here at Chernobyl. This has been a six year in the making thing. We've wanted to come here for so, so long and you've always said this was one of your favorite places ever and we did it. One of the first things we thought of for 25 by 25, we're like, we have to make it out to Chernobyl. Now we are able to see it and tell the story. And you know what, it was really cool to do it at our age, 24, 25, because Vlad was 24. We kind of got to see Chernobyl through his perspective. Our folks were all right around that age too, bro. My dad was literally 25 when yeah. this happened. With that being said, I know this is a very, very different style of video than we're used to. Hopefully you liked this whole multi-part documentary series. It was really fun to do yeah. something different. So if you did like it, leave a like. That's the best way that we know if this gets 300,000 likes. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go all the way to Japan. And visit another nuclear zone. Exclusion zone. Make sure to subscribe so you know when we do these videos. Yes. If you wanna see all the extra stuff that we filmed here at Chernobyl, make sure to check out Explore Club. And as well, check out the new Explore merch. All right, we got some cool stuff that we've been wearing throughout this trip. As always, check out Nate. All of his links will be in the description. We'll see you next time with another video. Adios.